Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today I'm going to finish up something I've been meaning to do for a while and that is have a quick discussion on Stellar Parallax. And this is the tool that we use to find the distance from the Earth to stars in our neighborhood here in the galaxy. This is good out to about a thousand parsecs and it's only limited by our ability to measure angles. So let's cue up the music and have a look at Stellar Parallax. Now stellar parallax is the use of trigonometry to triangulate the distance to local stars. Now this is the basic way that we do it. Now here is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. This is our baseline. And what we do is we form a triangle between the Earth, the Sun, and a star. And then what we measure is this angle called the parallax angle. And by using a little trigonometry, we can find our distances to the stars. Now, a quick warning. When I take this green screen down, the whiteboard is behind me. And for certain people in the science denying community, that will be a little concerning because there's mathematics on that board. But we're going to go through it, and we should be able to break it down into easily digestible chunks. So let's have a look. Now, Quantum Eraser and Nathan Oakley, if you need to go to your safe space, this is the time to leave. Now here's the basic concept of stellar parallax. What we do is we have a look at the Earth in two different locations. One would be, say, July, and the other would be January. Now, the distance between these two locations in the Earth's orbit is two astronomical units. Now what you see here is the Earth in three different locations. We have January, we have April, and we have July. Now in April, if we look at a star that we're interested in measuring the distance to, if we look past it, we'll see a star in the background. This is different than what happened when we looked at the star in January. We looked out at the star at that time, and we saw another star in the background. The angular distance between those two stars gives us something called a parallax angle. It's very much like looking at a pen, closing one eye, and then closing the other eye and seeing what's past the pen. We can tell that it jumps a little bit. Now that's what happens when we look at a star and compare it to distant stars. That star will appear to jump back and forth against the background stars. Now by measuring the amount of that jump, we can get this angle right here, and this is called the parallax angle. Then by using a rather simple formula, we take the distance between our two observing points, and then this angle in what we call radians, and then we calculate the distance to that star. Now this angle is extremely small. It's on the order of what we call arc seconds. Now, if we look at one degree of angle, that equals 60 minutes of angle, and one minute of angle equals 60 seconds. Of angle. So in other words, one second is one three thousand six hundredths of a degree. Now the next thing that we need to understand is how do we measure these angles? Are they in degrees? No, they're really not. What we do is we measure them in something called radians. And let's go over that in just a second. But first I want to introduce a new measurement of distance, and that's called the parsec and it was set up specifically to deal with parallax calculations. Now what a parsec is, is a base of one astronomical unit over a parallax angle of one arc second. Now in order to calculate what that is and compare it to something that we're more familiar with, specifically light years, we need to introduce the concept of radiance. Now I'll discuss this again in a minute, but let me just touch on it briefly right now. If we have a circle, that circle will have a radius. Now normally what we do when we look at circles is we divide the circumference of the circle by 360 and get 360 degrees. 
but there's another way of doing it. The circumference of a circle is defined by 2 times pi times the radius. So what we did was we came up with a concept of something called a radian. And a radian is a segment of the circumference of a circle that is equal in length to the radius of the circle. Now, how many radians would there be in a circle? If there are 360 degrees, how many radians would there be in a circle? Well, there would be two pi radians. Now, the reason that I'm mentioning radians, and I'll go over them again in just a moment, it's because that's how we measure the angles in the parallax formula. We put those angles in radians or fractions of a radian. So let's have a look at that real quick, and we'll figure out how many light years are in one parsec. To do that, we're going to convert one arc second to radians, and we're going to put in the value of one astronomical unit, which is approximately 93 million miles. Now, in order to do this conversion, we're going to actually use a little closer numbers. One astronomical unit is actually 92,955,000 miles. So we're going to convert that to 9.30, and I'm going to count that as three significant digits times 10 to the 7th. Now, one light year, even though we normally talk about it as 6 trillion miles, it's actually 5.88 trillion miles. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about real briefly was the conversion of arc seconds to radians. Now, multiplying arc seconds by 3600 gives you degrees. You multiply that by 180 and divide it by pi, and then you have radians. So our formula, d equals little d over parallax angle for one arc second would actually equal 6.48 times 10 to the 5 over pi astronomical units or 206,000 astronomical units. So with that to start with, we're going to go ahead and do the conversion. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 6.48 times 10 to the 5 over one arc second times pi astronomical units equals 206,000 astronomical units equals 206,000 times 9 point or 9.30 times 10 to the 7th divided by 5.88 times 10 to the 12 miles. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll start off with 206, which is right there. And we're going to multiply that by 9.3, which will be right there. And then we're going to divide that number by 5.88. That's almost 5.9. So we'll be just a hair less than that. There's our answer right there. And if you look at that, there's 3, 3, 1, 3, 2, about 3.26. So one parsec. That's parallax arc second, by the way, equals 3.26 light years. Now, right here, we've got one arc second. But what if the parallax to the star is not one arc second? What we would do then would be to substitute the actual number of arc seconds for this one. So let's take an example Polaris. is 7.54 plus or minus 0 0.11 milli arc seconds. That's the parallax of Polaris. Now, one milli arc second, that means that this is 7.54 times 10 to the negative 3 arc seconds. So to find parsecs, we would take one parsec and divide it by 7.54 times 10 to the negative 3. So what we'll do is we'll take 1, 
divided by 7.54. Remember, the number that we're doing something to is on the body of the slide, and the number we're using to do something to it is on the slide. And here's our answer right here. This is 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. And it looks like it's between the second and third increment here. So that would be 133 parsecs. And that is the actual distance to Polaris. Likewise, we can do it with light years. We'll take 3.26 light years. Divide that by 7.54 times 10 to the negative 3. And we'll do that right here. So once again, the number that we're doing something to is 3.26. And what are we doing to it? We're dividing it by 7.54. And here's our answer right here. So that's 4.123, about 3. So the answer here. It's 433 light years. And that's the distance to Polaris. Now let's just rehash the math real quick so that we're thorough on it. Here's the basic formula for doing a parallax equation of a star. The top part, well, this entire term right here, simply converts arc seconds to radians. Now this was standardized for one arc second. So one arc second would have been down here. We put the actual value in where that one was, and that gave us our answer. Recall that one parsec is about 3.26 light years and represents a parallax angle of one arc second with an observer distance of one astronomical unit. Now, another thing that I'd like to mention is this right here. The Earth's orbit is elliptical. It's not a circular orbit. So what we consider one astronomical unit is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. Now, when we're doing observations of a star, we need to find two spots in our orbit that are at right angles to that star. And they may be at different times of the year. Every day you can look up the actual distance to the sun. So on the day that we did this one, we could find out that it was 1.001 .001 astronomical unit. We have to use the actual baseline distance when we do these calculations. We'll get close if we use the average, but if you want precision, you have to use the actual numbers, and we do know those things. Well, now, even though these seem like large numbers and they seem like they may be difficult to do, if you have some basic math skills, shouldn't be any problem for you at all. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put the parallax angles for a couple of common stars in the description of this video. Feel free to work out the distances on those parallax angles. Down at the bottom of the description, I'll put the answers so you can check. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by. I do appreciate your viewership and the support of this channel. Remember that we have a Patreon and memberships and a PayPal. And if you want to contribute to some of the equipment that we're getting, you're more than welcome to, and it will be much appreciated. In the meantime, take care and stay healthy. Until next time.